everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm doing a solo playthrough of the new one from Stonemeyer. This is Expeditions. They sent me an early review copy of this one. And I am under a review embargo until about mid-June, so I'll let you know my thoughts on the game later, but I wanted to at least show you how it plays. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also check out our separate streaming channel for even more content, listen to our weekly podcast, or join the conversation on our Discord. So in Expeditions, each player has this mech that will be traveling around this map. It takes up a lot of space, so I won't be showing all of it at once. Well, here, at least once, I guess, for full context. I'll show the entire thing. So yeah, your mech will be traveling around. These southern tiles start exposed, and you can see what benefits they're going to give you. But these central and northern tiles, uh, you don't know what they're going to have for you yet. And there's also five slots for cards in between the tiles. Those are actually the cards you'll be adding to your hand. And then in kind of like a mix of a tableau builder and a deck builder using for special abilities... And in a scythish way, you're trying to complete different objectives to put your stars on them. And once one player has put down four stars, that triggers the end of the game and each player gets one more turn. Then you see you have most victory points. You're going to get uh, coins from different abilities. You're going to complete quests and get points for the stars you placed on the board. You're going to get points for any items you upgraded. And finally, for any corruption tokens you defeated in you know what the game calls combat, although it's <laughs> very straightforward. And by the way, this uh, board usually is at the bottom, but I couldn't make it fit uh, while still filming, so I'm just going to keep it off to the side. And a key element for each player in the game is their little mech board here. So first of all, each mech has a different benefit. Mine is good at vanquishing, which is uh, fighting the corruption you'll see later. And you have this little action cube, so you're going to start on the refresh spot at the beginning of the game. And each turn you move it one space in the direction of your choice, and then you take all the actions that are uncovered. So when you come away from refreshing, you can take a move, a play, and a gather action. But then the next turn has to go up to one of these spaces. So if I'm covering move, I would just do a play and a gather. Or if I'm covering gather, I would just do a move and a play. And then on each turn, you have to move it to a different space. So you don't have to go in any specific order, but you have to cover one action. But a big thing is you'll be putting cards from your hand, which is anything to the left of your mech board, into your played area, which is things to the right of your mech board. And you can also, if you have them as you play cards, put workers that match the uh, colored worker called for in the bottom left of the card. So eventually you're going to run out of cards or run out of workers. And then you can take what's called a refresh turn, where you move this down to refresh. You get all your workers and cards back to use again. But that's all you do for that turn. But then on the next turn, you get to do all three actions. So it's not as uh, much of a null turn as you might think it is. And the three actions are pretty straightforward. Uh, when you play somebody, you always get this uh, value in the upper left, which for some cards can increase, which is going to level up your guile and or your power. And these are mainly used to complete quests and also to fight corruption with the vanquish action, which is going to come from some of your cards, like your starting companion. You also have a solve action where you can solve quests, which will come from your starting character. When you move, you can move up to three spaces. And if you move into an uncovered space, you're going to uh, get the map token, which isn't really good for much by itself, but having five of them can get you one of your stars on the uh, victory board by boasting. And then you'll flip the tile over and put some corruption things on there you can fight. Uh, you'll unlock new actions you can do. And then the last main action is the gather action. Wherever you are, you get to do whatever the indicated action is, which include gaining workers, uh, getting cards, which are uh, yellow is going to refer to the cards that are face up in the little spaces. Purple is going to get you cards from the top of the deck. This one activates another adjacent location. And that's basically how the player turns go. Now, for the solo play of the Automa, you're going to have uh, two mechs for the AI. You've got a blue one only in the north spaces and a black mech only in the central spaces. And they're going to flip cards each turn, which will first of all determine if they advance their little blue token here, which is called gaining progress. And it's going to uh, vary based on what difficulty you're playing on. I beat my last game at level two, which is the starting difficulty. So I'm trying level three. Whenever they reach a star, they take one off of their little glory card here. So they have eight stars again instead of four, so that's when they'll trigger the final rounds of the game. And then after uh, potentially doing progress, you're going to check for the blue and the black mech. If the number of stars the Atoma has gained so far is equal to or greater than this, then they're going to do a specific action like uncovering the map or defeating corruption or other things. Otherwise, they just move uh, for no effect. The blue one always keeps moving east and the north. The black one always keeps moving west. They just wrap around if they reach the end. So basically kind of like uh, you're leveling up with your deck building slash tableau building, the uh, Automa will be leveling up as well as they get more stars. And you'll see all the rest of the details as we play. Uh, it's supposed to be randomized which player goes first. So I'll say that I am a one to three. The Automa is a four to six. So I'm going first. So my first turn, I'm going to move from refresh to the blank space, which means I'll get to do a play, a move, and a gather action in any order. 
And to show you my starting cards, everyone starts with a character and a matching companion. I've got Olga. She's going to get me a Guile once I have my uh, first and second glory stars on the board. I'll get more stuff. And if I can get a green worker, it says she lets me gain a blue worker or solve a quest. And if you solve a quest, you gain the core value. That's how these values in the upper left of all your solved quests. And this is like a generic thing. So her gain a blue worker is unique to her. But the solve a quest, all the characters do. And then Changa, my, is that a tiger? Heck yeah. Uh, Changa gets me a power. And then again, better stuff as I uh, complete stars. And then if I have a blue worker, gain one exposed benefit from an adjacent location. That's a uh, pretty awesome. So it's like an extra gather action. Or vanquish. If this vanquish removes the location's final corruption, you may gain the revealed benefit. That again is a consistent ability. Every companion that you start with has a way to vanquish corruption. Every character you start with has a way to uh, complete quests. So I think I'd like to play my character card, Olga, and she needs a green worker. So let's uh, just start off by getting some workers. So I'll go one, two here to the sawmill. That was my move action. Then for my gather action, I can gain a green or a red worker. I'll get a green one. And this is my worker for the rest of the game. They will never go away. I can put them on Olga or other cards. Whenever I refresh, they're going to come back to be used again. Okay, finally for my play, I'm going to play Olga. I can resolve these in either order I want. I'll go ahead and get the guile first which again is good for quests and corruption, so useless right now. And then I'll put this on the green. I can gain a blue worker or solve a quest. I don't even have any quest cards yet, so I'll just gain the blue worker, which sets me up to activate Changa's ability on my next turn. Now to briefly show what you can get glory for, um, there's going to be ways to tuck cards under your player mat. There's three types of cards, quest cards, item cards, and uh, meteorite cards. Quest cards, you complete the quest and they get tucked under your mat. That's the hearts. Uh, meteorite cards, you can meld. They get tucked under the bottom of your mat and give you like some money, some victory points. And then item cards, you can upgrade to tuck under the right side of your mat. And they give you ongoing bonuses. So one time money slash victory points, ongoing bonuses, and like quests are kind of their own thing. And four is the max you can have of any of those. And for each of them, when you get it to four, that's one way to get glory. You can also get a glory for defeating the uh, 20 value corruption token. That's going to come out on a specific tile at the very north of the map. You can also uh, get glory for defeating seven regular corruption. And I had mentioned that my mech has a bonus for defeating corruption. So I'll probably want to go for that one. You can also get a glory for having eight cards in your hand and play areas at the same time. Does not count cards you've tucked under, which again, you won't see for a little while. And then finally, for either having seven workers or five map tokens, you can get the last one, one or the other. Remember, I can get up to four glory. The uh, AI is not really caring about any of that. They're just trying to get eight stars, but it doesn't actually like, go anywhere. And speaking of the Automa, let's flip their first card. So they are gaining a progress. They're halfway to their first star. And then we're going to look. Okay, so the blue mech does not have five stars yet. So we're just going to move two to the right. And they don't care whether locations are uncovered or not. Then the black mech first is going to sweep. This is going to kind of keep the cards churning. It means that any card adjacent to their current location, which is this find a former factory engineer that was a quest, uh, that card's going to go away and you're going to immediately draw a replacement. And I'll show you like what some of these cards are once we uh, <laughs> actually have a way to get them. Okay, but then looking at the action, uh, they do not have two stars yet. So the black mech is just going to move three to the west. One, two, three. There we go. That is it for the automa turns. They are lightning fast, which I certainly appreciate. Now, come back to my second turn. I have to move this up. And, hmm, I gotta cover one. I think right now I don't care about moving yet. So let's go ahead and play and gather. So I'll go ahead and do the play first. So playing Chang is gonna get me one power. I got one of each. Uh, generally, the corruption tokens have values of three to five. So even with my bonus of one, I'll need two to four of those to actually kill anything. Okay, and then I do have a blue worker. I can gain the exposed benefit from adjacent location, or I can vanquish. There are no corruption tokens. Those don't come out until you start exploring the more northerly locations. But I can activate an adjacent exposed benefit, and this one lets me activate an adjacent exposed benefit. <laughs> so uh, I can get a red worker, a green worker, a blue worker, a yellow worker, or this one at the mech junkyard lets me draw two cards from the top of the deck and keep one to add to my hand. I want some more cards. We're going to go with the mech junkyard. And here we can start talking about uh, two of the three types of cards. There are, again, quests, meteorites, and items. So quests first, you can still play them just like a regular card. You can totally ignore the actual quest parts. This one would get me power. If I had a yellow worker, it would let me do a vanquish action, kind of like I do with my uh, tiger. Ooh, and after each corruption you gain, also gain a guile and a power. That's kind of crazy, especially with me having the ability to, uh, to fight some dudes. But alternatively, you can complete the quest. You need to be on the tile number indicated. This is nine. 
Uh, one through six are at the bottom. Seven through, I think it's like 14 are in the middle and then 15 and above are at the top. And if you're on that space, then if you do a solve action, which again, is going to come from your starting character or other cards you get, you have to pay what it says. So here it's two power. You gain the benefit. In this case, you get a free uh, defeated corruption. And then you tuck it at the top of your board. So all you'll see is this. And uh, depending on how you solve, like your main character, you're going to gain all of the exposed things for all the quests you've done. So you'll get like a lot of power and guile. So that's how quests go. You got to go to a specific location and pay some stuff and use the solve action. Meteorites are a little different. Uh, you'll see that they can gain more guile or power for you when you play them. And this is how many melded meteorites you have. So meteorites tend to boost other meteorites. This one is gain one face-up item to your hand. And if you've already uh, melded two meteorites or more, you also gain one power per item in your hand. That's pretty cool. Now, meteorites have something on the side you don't pay attention to until you meld them. Melding meteorites and upgrading items is going to come from central and northern tiles, unless you get like a card early that lets you do it. And when you meld a meteorite, you get this immediate bonus. So here it's gain $1 per item you control. So this one is all about items. But then the cool thing is, as you uh, meld each new meteorite, I mean, that's not one, but you can imagine, you get all the bonuses. You'll get like more and more money, which is a straight up victory points. So meteorites uh, tend to combo with other meteorites quite a bit. Or in this case, they also combo with items well. Now between these two, like this seems to fit my mech's ability to attack pretty darn well. So I'm going to uh, discard the or get rid of the brainstone and just get this raise a corrupted building quest. And how it works when you gain a card is it goes to the right of all your other cards as though you had played it, but you get no benefit. You can't put the worker on it. Basically, it's hanging out with no effect until you take the refresh action, which I'll probably take in a moment to get all your cards and workers back. Now, this one needs a yellow worker, and I still have my gather for the turn. But sadly, my location can only give me a green or a red. Now, I already have a green, and there's only one other card that wants a green. So I'm going to get the red just for diversity in case I get a uh, red card later that wants one. But I might go over and get a yellow worker at some point here. Okay, that was my play and gather. Uh-oh. Uh, the Atoma is getting another progress, which means they have now unlocked one star. And you pay attention to the rightmost or, you know, furthest along star. So they will now activate all actions that have a zero or one star, which is neither of these. So blue is going to move three, black is going to move one. Boop and a boop. All right. Now, eventually, they'll actually do some actions. <laughs> Probably next turn. We'll see. All right. And for my next turn... I think I'll just go ahead and refresh, which again, uses my entire turn. So I get all my workers back so I can use them again. I get all my cards back, maybe get a yellow for the quest. And then on my next turn, I'm going to get to do all three actions. So again, like the rest action is kind of only costing you one action in a way, because instead of doing two, you do three the next turn. So uh, usually it's worth doing. <laughs> And right, now we flip over another one of these. They do gain another progress. Jeez. Uh, by the way, you randomly take two cards out of this deck each time they run through it. And then when they go through all the cards, you're going to shuffle those two back in and then randomly remove two again. So you never like have 100% surety of what they're going to be doing. And it looks like the blue mech is going to sweep everything next to it. But besides that, they are, again, shy of the stars needed. Blue's going to move one. Black's going to move two. Okay, so blue sweeps away this meteorite, placing it with a quest. And then what were they? They're moving one. Black just moves two. And the next time they each move, since they're at the edge, they will just uh, go around. Like, it's kind of like a little Pac-Man style uh, <laughs> conveyor belt there. All right, so now it's me. I can move, I can play, and I can gather. Hmm. All right, well, I want to have some options here. But I also, except for maybe again some cards. I mean, do I care about any of the cards right now? So just look at them. The universal vice is an item. So items, when you play them, is the one type we didn't show yet. You still get the thing up here. And then you do two things. You get an immediate action. Like here, I could upgrade an item, including this card, I guess. And then also, by the way, both of these need the blue worker. And then also you have an ongoing ability while it's uh, in your play area to the right of your board. Whenever you upgrade this or another item, gain one money and one power. And that's also uh, what you get when you upgrade. You tuck it under the right side of your board and you just have this ongoing as a permanent bonus. And also these are the only type of tuckable things that gives you a victory points in and of itself, gives you money. This is worth three money at the end of the game. You also got a quest in the upper left. Gain an exposed benefit from an opponent's location. That opponent gains one. Oh, this is interesting. I guess... I could use this on the Atoma. They don't actually have Guile without giving them any benefit. But besides that, it's not that exciting. This item, Ether Vision Goggles, or Aether. So you gain a map token, which again doesn't do anything on its own. Oh, but whenever you gain a map, you may gain a Guile and rearrange locations corruption. So you could like put the easiest to kill thing on the top. You'll see corruption when I explore in a second. Uh, befriend a local legend. Gain a uh, power or pay five power to gain three money. That's pretty good if you can get like a way to get power quickly. 
And last one, the Cypher Stone. Discard a card to activate its ability or gain the previous card's core value. Yeah, none of these are really exciting to me. So what I'm going to do, uh, what I have? I move, play, gather. For move, I'm going to go one, two, three. So we'll flip over our first thing. I get the map token. Five of these could let me get a glory, um, but <laughs> does nothing on its own. I flip the, ooh, this is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I flip the location over. It's going to let me get two power. And then you'll see this. This is a meld space. So when I gathered at this location, I could either gain two power or meld a meteorite card, tucking it underneath, getting money. But the reason this has a five plus next to it is because it's guarded by corruption, those things that I want to fight. And what the five plus means is I'm going to draw tokens one at a time, three, placing them on top of each other until I've equaled or exceeded that value. Oh, another power three. So that is six total. But kind of a nice combo here that, uh, yeah, you can get power at the same location. Defeating these is worth two money each at the end of the game, two victory points. Defeating seven of them lets you get a glory. And by the way, I'm saying all these things to let you get glory, to let you put stars down, but you don't actually do it for free. You have to find a different location that has a star action on it and do what's called a boast action by going there. So you don't like get your stars immediately. Now, additionally, when you defeat the final corruption on a location with your companion, they have this uh, special bonus. You get to, if you want, immediately resolve the revealed benefit. Now, I don't have any meteorites to uh, meld. So that wouldn't really matter to me. But still, it's cool that they have that. All right. So that was uh, my move. Now I'm going to gather. So I'll just get to uh, fist, to power. Which gets me to three. So if I did a vanquish action right now, I could defeat the top one. And when you vanquish, you can defeat as many as you want. So for example, if I had six power, I could go boop. And then I could also go boop all part of the same action. And my mech's ability is that the first of each color, because there's uh, the orange ones that are defeated with power and the, uh, what is it, green ones that are defeated with guile. The first time I fight each of those on my turn, I pay one less. So here, that would only be a two for me, but that would still be a three. If this had been a guile three, it would have been two and two, which would have been better for me. Now, I don't really care about melding, but I do like this Razor Corrupted building thing. It lets me vanquish and gain a bunch of bonuses for doing so, which means I actually want to get a yellow worker. So let's uh, let's play Changa. This is my last action of the turn since I've moved and gathered. So I get a power. I'm up to four, and I can uh, either get an exposed benefit from an adjacent location or vanquish. And yeah, no surprise, I'm going to get the gain a yellow worker. So now next turn, I can vanquish both of those dudes and get a bunch of stuff back for doing so. So it'll barely cost me anything. So I should be like a vanquishing machine uh, with that raise a corrupted building quest. So yeah, I moved, I gathered, I played. I'm done. Okay, let's see if these guys can finally not progress. No such luck. They're working on their second star. Oh, but they still have no actions. So you'll see these in a second. That means they'll like move and expose a tile. That means they'll vanquish some things they can see. But no, we just have blue moving to, black moving to. Jeez, I can barely fit it. Wrap around, wrap around. There we go. And you can't move into a space with another mech. Now, they're a little weird in that they're moving through places that aren't revealed yet. So how they kind of accommodate that is like, let's say this guy was here and I was moving. You can move through their space if they're on an unexplored place as though they had explored it temporarily to like go there or there. That way you're not like uh, stuck by them getting in your way. All righty, all righty. Um... So I want to stay where I am, I think. So I think I'm going to play and gather. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, gather first. Well, I think I would have enough either way. So I'm going to get two a fist, two power. So boop, boop. And then I'll play Raise a Corrupted Building. Gets me another power. And then I can vanquish. And after each corruption I gain, I also get a guile and a power. Man, this is great. So with my max ability, that's going to cost me two power. And that's going to cost me three power. I'm not playing Changa, so I don't get to immediately resolve this. Not that I have a meteorite to meld anyway. But it was, again, two and then three. So I'm down to two. But then for each one I defeated, I get one of each. So wow, I'm like in a way better off than I was a second ago. Yeah, this is great. So each of those is two victory points. Seven is going to be the sweet spot to let me get a glory. Also, if I can get three more workers or four more map tokens, that would let me get a glory. Five more cards in general would let me get a glory. And uh, tucking quests and items and meteorites and all that fun stuff. Right, that was it for me. Hey, and they finally did not get a progress. Which means they don't get a two stars yet. And they, wow, this is uh, longer than it usually takes them. Uh, the blue mech's going to sweep. The black mech's just going to move three. Still, neither of them has the starts to take an action. Blue Mech sweeps a quest and <laughs> gets another quest. And what were they doing? Two. Black Mech moves three, and they do skip your space. So one, two, three. And as for me, I could refresh or move and gather or move and play Olga. I mean, Olga could let me get another blue worker, which get me pretty close to the seven workers, which would then boost up Changa and Olga every time I play them, which is pretty darn good. 
Yeah, I could just like, but Gathering would let me get uh, the two power of the space I'm on if I do it first, or I could get something from the space I'm about to move to. I think I'm going to move and play since I don't know what I'm going to gather yet. So I don't love any of these cards, so I don't really care which way I go. Um, yeah, no, let's go this way. So I get another map token. I get to reveal some more corruption for me to maybe kill. Ooh, this space gives me Guile Quicker. lets me upgrade an item. Another card type I don't have yet. Oh, <laughs> and this time we get just a single one because we already reached five or more. So for me, that would cost four Guile, which I don't have yet. Although yet it's a pretty quick period of time because I'm going to play Olga, which gets me to four Guile. And then I will gain a blue worker since I have no quest to solve. Don't necessarily need another blue worker, but again, uh, seven of them is going to be a gloryable uh, <laughs> thing to have. All right, Altoma, what you got? Oh, they got their second star. That's what they got. And they're finally going to do an action. Yay! Okay, so uh, the blue max is going to move three. If they had six stars, they would try to kill the level 20 corruption, which is like a unique thing. And that's an, a glory thing all to itself, which I would love to get because I got a bonus against it. But yeah, so this one is going to sweep first, and then they're going to expose a thing and get the map token. For them, map tokens are worth victory points. Uh, for me, as I've said, not so much. So they will not move. Let me show you how this works, actually. So let's do the blue one first. They just move three. One, two, three. And the black one <laughs> really doesn't like these quests. Is going to sweep that. And so we got another quest. Drive off the Marauders. Discard a card to gain two power. Meh. Although quests are always good. Uh, if you slot them, they do make all of your stars, all of your glory tokens worth more. So they're worth doing. Okay, so now let me show you how this works. So they would move one west if they uh, didn't have the ability to do this, but they do have at least one star. And you totally ignore the range, the one, two, three, four, whatever range on here, if they can do the action. Instead, they're looking zero to three spaces away the closest they can. So they're looking for a place that has not been explored yet, still has a map token, zero to three spaces in the direction they're moving. The one they're on is the closest, that's zero. So they get the map token, that is again a permanent uh, victory point for them. And they flip it over and they place uh, the corruption on it and that's it. So it is a warehouse. It would let uh, you get one of the face-up cards adjacent to the spot. And oop, they got another five guile straight up. And just a note, although I love this card, so I'm not going to do this anytime soon, that is the location where I could complete my quest card. And here, I can show you briefly how the Atoma scores there on the two. So they're going to get one victory point for each map token, two for each defeated corruption, same as me, and five for each star. But again, they can get eight stars instead of just my four. And that changes along with the speed of their star gaining based on difficulty. Like, look at the highest level, maps are worth two. Uh, corruption looks like is... Oh no, they're worth only one at the easiest level, but they're always worth two otherwise. And stars are worth five. So yeah, really the main thing that changes is that you just get fewer turns because they advance so quickly. I mean, look at this. The, at the lowest level, it's what? 8, 16, 24, uh, 31 versus 5, 8, 16, 21. There's a lot fewer turns if you're playing at the highest level. All right, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised by this. We are refreshing. And now I'm ready to fight, baby, <laughs> with that... Uh, Razor Corrupted Building or Changa thing. Hey, you might say I have a one-track mine. That's fine. Oh, they're progressing again. And, ah, so this would never be an action. They don't have at least three stars. So one blue move, three black move. I won't show it. I'll just do it off camera. Who cares? <laughs> okay, now again, I get to do a bit of everything. Um, Let's see. And so once again, I don't really want to use the uh, revealed benefit here. So I think I'm going to attack with my quest. It'll get me a bonus for defeating something. So let's gather first, which will get me two more Guile. Then for my play, I'll raise a Corrupted Building, uh, which is going to get me a power first. And then I will Vanquish, defeating this guy, which only costs me four Guile with my mech's ability. And because I Vanquished a token, oh, I love this combo. <laughs> I mean, I wish I had something else that was benefiting from all this, but it's pretty good by itself. I still have Changa to use, which is pretty great. Oh, and I can still move. Uh, and let's see, might as well get another map. Um, the Atoma tends to do more stuff in the central, and then only when they have more stars do stuff in the north, so I kind of like to grab maps from the, uh, more southerly spaces first, since they'll, uh, get them otherwise. So I'll go over here, be next to the warehouse I can fight at. It's a Crater Rim. Oh, so this is an interesting ability. Uh, this one, if you gather, lets you sweep as many cards as you want, which could be zero, and then it lets you refresh all your cards. Now, it's not technically a refresh action, you won't take all three actions the next turn, but it does let you get like all your key cards back if you want. Which actually, I can totally see myself doing. Oh, geez, another five. God, I don't have enough for that. That's it, right? I gathered, I played the quest to attack. Yep, I'm done. Oh, no progress. But, and no, they don't have three stars. So just two blue move, one black move. They might be dull now, but they will definitely explode later in the game. 
Now let's see, what do I want to do next? I could like play and gather, um, which would let me play a card first and then get it right back, which seems pretty darn good. Yeah, let's uh, let's try that. So for the play, do I want to activate an adjacent location or do I want to get another worker, which would put me only one away from the glory? Although <laughs> I'm also only two maps away from the glory, so do I really care about more workers? Yeah, I think I'm going to play... Ch oh, actually, that's right. The thing I'm on needs Guile to be defeated, though. But I also want more cards. Uh, okay, I I'll play Olga. Uh, so that gets me a Guile. And yeah, we'll get us going and get a blue worker. So one more worker would uh, give me enough to get the glory if I can find a location that allows that. That was the play, and now the gather. Pretty basic gather. Um, yeah, none of these help with any of the stuff I'm doing at all, so I'm going to throw them all away. Replace with another uh, quest. Gain Guile per adjacent revealed location or gain a map from the general supply. Wah, wah, who cares? Aid stone. It's a meteorite. Vanquish. Ooh. And then if you have two uh, meteorites melded, gain a guile per orange corruption, which I already have a bunch of. Oh, and then gain one per orange corruption when you meld. Okay, yeah, that I definitely want. Oh, I should have said where it was going. Sorry. And then what's this last one? Uh, another meteorite. Gain one face-up meteorite to your hand. So this helps you get other meteorites. Remember, they combo together. Gain guile per meteorite you control. Gain one per meteorite. Okay, so this is just a meteorite combo, kind of like the one was an item combo. And this one is a vanquishing combo. I want to try to get that. Okay, then the other part of this is uh, refreshing. So I get my peeps back, ready to fight again. What's the bonus here? That's an upgrade. Who cares? That's a meld, though. All right. Ooh, and that has a way to get a card that's adjacent. Okay. Well, it's a bit far in the future. Let's see what's happening now. They're progressing again. Uh, they do not have five stars, so blue will move two. Oh, but they do have at least zero stars, so they're going to uh, uncover a location again. Aha, I told you it's good to get the maps early sometimes, because they don't have one, two, or three, or zero maps to be revealed. So they're just doing the two black movement of its alternative. So I just cost them a victory point. Take that. Although now they're also on the space, so I was thinking about going to. You, but. Right, let's see then. Do I want to move and gather and play? The gather on my own space doesn't really matter at all. I think I'd rather move and play to be able to fight somewhere. And yeah, let's go over here, I guess. So I'll get that map. That's four. The Weird Forest. Another melding one, or it can get me purple workers, which tend to have the strongest abilities on cards. Oh, come on, let's get a mix this time. Four out of five. Oh my god. I mean, it is a mix, but not necessarily <laughs> the kind of values I wanted. But I can, yeah, I mean, I can defeat them both, so I guess I might as well do it. So for my play, I'll go ahead and uh, raise a corrupted building. That'll give me one power, gets me to seven, and then, what was it, it's for my uh, benefit. My mech makes that four guile, and then my mech makes that three power. And after each corruption, I gain one of each. Gosh, that's great. Okay, so I'm only two away from being able to do that. And if I do get that meteorite, it's going to give me the full, like, three money for having uh, the max orange. So I'd like to get that if I can. Maybe I will. Maybe that guy will move off. Please don't sweep black. Yay! Okay. <laughs> No progress. Uh, blue is actually going to uncover something. Wow, so they're uncovering a uh, <laughs> a northern location. Black's just going to move one. Yes, yeah, so blue looks at this. These places tend to have way better abilities. Ah, here's our first one that actually lets us boast and get a, uh, a star on the board. And notice that these don't have a slash. So you get to get any face-up card and boast once uh, the five plus is defeated there. Jeez, once again, it's just a <laughs> guile. Um, cool. That's a great place for me to go to, because if I can defeat one more corruption on my way there, then uh, that one will get me my seventh, and I can immediately boast it if I defeat it uh, with my uh, doggy tiger dude. And then Black had one move, so he's good getting off the warehouse, because I want to go there. Yeah, let's do uh, move and gather. So I'm going to go here, and I want to get this aid stone that uh, is going to help me with my vanquishing strategy. And yeah, what comes out? Another meteorite. Charter stone. Move to any unoccupied face-up location. It lets you just kind of teleport around. And then you can gain uh, lots of guile with it, and gain one per adjacent face-up card. So that's just, like, based on moving around. That was my entire turn. We're almost through the first go, and they're almost to three stars. And, okay, just the black one is going to uncover. Blue's just moving one. Which means there's only going to be one unexplored central location. What's this one have? Let's you play an extra card and uh, or upgrade an item. And three. So at least we got the different colors. That's good for my power. Although five orange is a lot. Let's see. This turn I can play and gather or uh, move and play. Or I can refresh. I kind of want to move and play and like go over towards that one. So let's try that. So one, two, three for the move. And then for the play. What the heck? I. Uh, Oh, I can, oh, that's right. I can get a, 
uh, revealed benefit. I kind of want to beguile. Oh, I need the guile to fight the thing. So I guess I should do the guile. Oh no, the space I'm on lets me get guile. It's okay. I, I want to do Changa, which gets me a power. And yeah, I can get an exposed benefit from an adjacent location. Oh, but not the space I'm on. So I can get any face up card or I can get two more power. I don't need two more power. I'm thinking I might meld some meteorites. And this one just gets me money for having more meteorites. So if I meld the other one, since I already have a bunch of orange, and then meld this one, that seems pretty good. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the encampment's adjacent ability to gain that. What comes out? Oh, another meteorite. All right, uh, one per placed worker. I do have a lot of workers, although I don't know if I'm placing them on cards that much. So I'm kind of seeing like the scope of my strategy now. I can definitely get the seven of these bonus. That's pretty easy. So that's one star. Uh, workers or maps is going to be very easy, so that'd be two stars. Uh, four meteorites maybe would be three stars. Maybe trying to kill the uh, level 20 corruption, since I'm good at fighting, could be four if they don't get to it first. Yeah, I'm going to rest on my next turn and try to make some of that happen. First, the final card. Ah, they got to their third star, which means blue is going to sweep and explore, and black is going to move. Right, so we have a quest. Another meteorite. Uh, one per yellow card you control, which is currently one. So that's not that great. <laughs> and they're getting this as their fourth map token. But again, it's just one victory point each. Okay, eight, five orange. Ooh, that's what I likey. <laughs> yeah, because more money for me if I can defeat those. All right, and I think I'll refresh. Seems like the way to go here. And then we'll uh, get our first star next turn. Yay. Oh, and time to put these two cards back in. Shuffle everything up. And again, two random cards are removed. And... No progress, and just uh, blue's gonna explore again. Wow, they're really getting all those maps. So they look up to three away, wrapping around. The closest one is right next to them. Location 14. Upgrade and get just a generic map token from the supply. Pretty much worthless for me. They got a four orange, a five orange, so I do not like that place as much. <laughs> all right, so now I get to do everything. So first I'm going to gather where I am. So I don't have enough guile to actually defeat the thing I'm going toward. Okay, then I'm going to move to the encampment. I'm going to play. Oh, wait, what am I going to play? Oh, crud. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, I just realized I don't have seven workers yet. I don't have five maps yet. And I don't have seven of these yet. I'm literally like short on everything. That's right, so no worries. Uh, no worries, I guess. Uh, <laughs> no worries. I'll play uh, Olga. Get another guile. Nothing wrong with that. And I'll activate her ability to get another blue worker. There we go. That's my seventh worker. So like next turn, I can do all that stuff. And I can still move, which means I can lock this place down. I won't have to move next turn. I can play and I can gather. Ooh, so I can do double star. Oh, that won't work, will it? Well, that's okay. That's okay. We'll figure something out. I'm sure there's lots of ways I could be more efficient with this. Wow, still not doing the thing. Oh, they're defeating up to two corruptions. So they go to the first place that has any, and then that's the maximum number they can defeat in that one location. So they won't like kind of split the deal. And then uh, the black just moves one. So blue takes both of those out, which I'm kind of okay with. I didn't want to do this the uh, same color, and this one just moves. Okay, so yeah, now we're going to play, and we're going to gather. Now, I was going to play Changa to be able to activate the star when I uncover it, but the gather will do both if I do that second. So I might as well use Raise a Corrupted Building. So that's my play. Get a power, um, and I'm vanquishing just this single one, which is my sixth. Darn it. <laughs> Only cost me four. And then because I use that, I get one of each. I got to go fight some orange. Okay, and then gathering. Now I get both of these. Heck yeah. So I get to do my first star and I get any face-up card. And yeah, the charter stone is fine. I'm trying to get more meteorites. Uh, it gives me money for adjacent locations. I can certainly do that. And another, geez, lots of meteorites. This one comes in. Game one per green card you control. Ooh, I actually have two of those. It's not the worst. Although one of them is a meteorite that I plan to meld. But I have three meteorites. If I can get one more, that's the most I could ever meld. So I probably don't want to go beyond there. All right, and then I finally get my first star for seven workers. Uh, I need one more of the corruptions to get that. I'm able to meld a bunch. I'm actually at six cards. So I'm pretty close to that one, too. Although if I start melding, I won't be. So maybe I want to do that in a different order. But now uh, the big thing is Chang is now going to get me one of each. And if I can get another star, even a second power, Olga does the same. So it's nice to get early stars, although I wouldn't call this early. I could have gone a lot faster. All right, they're moving up. Seven would let them defeat the 20. They're just going to move three. And this guy's going to explore. Oh, and there's one left. And yeah, in one, two, three spaces, there's the last unexplored place. So the uh, the center is fully explored. Oh, that's another place to get stars. Or one of each. Cool. That's a three guile. Ah, another three guile. Well, it's cheap, but it doesn't uh, take advantage of my power, really. I definitely want to kill some more things. I have enough, and it would use up some of my uh, power to go there. I mean, I don't have a item. 
but still, I think it's worth it. So I'll go one, two, three. Oh, sorry, that's a move and play. And then for my Changa play, gets me a fist and a guile. And I'm vanquishing, so that's four power with my ability and only two guile with my ability. Nice, so I have uh, at least seven. I can do another star. And I just revealed this with Changa's ability. If I had an item, I could uh, <laughs> upgrade it. I don't, sadly. All right. They're progressing again. They're almost to four stars, but they're not there yet. So they aren't uh, defeating corruption. Blue's moving one, and there are no more map tiles to uncover, so black's moving three. Nice innocuous turn there. I like it. All right, let's see. Um, I can do a move and gather. I think I want to go here and get another star and get another card. It'd be almost eight. So that's one, uh, two, three. So I'm going to uh, get a card and uh, do a star. Yep. Ooh, because then if I gather again on my next turn, I can get an eighth card and get another star. Wow. All right. So that's uh, one star for having at least seven of those. And I can get a card. Uh, all of them are meteorites except for one quest. And theoretically, my quest would make my stars worth more. Uh, your stars are worth five if you've done no quests, six if you've done one quest, and eight if you've done two quests, and ten if you've done three or four quests. So the fourth quest doesn't really help you more. So it might be worth doing. And another quest comes out. Interrogate, meteorite, eyewitnesses. Gain a brain or gain an adjacent face-up meteorite. Eh, whatever. At least it's easy to complete. All right. What y'all up to? Oh, they got their fourth star. But uh, I'm close to getting my fourth star, so haha. -ha. Well, no, my third star, I should say. Uh, oop, and they do get to vanquish, therefore. Up to three on a single space. Uh, again, the closest one within zero to three range, and then black just moves two. Ah, darn. This was a good spot for me to go to, but they get both of those. All right, now, no question about it. I'm definitely going to play and gather. Now, which of these do I want to play? Oh, I don't have the purple for that, so I guess I'll do this one. Oh, it lets me vanquish. That's useless. Okay, so never mind. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I will play this one. Just because it uh, gets me a guile and I have less guile. Okay, so I'll play that just for the guile. Wah, wah. Then I'm gathering here again. I will get the quest since all the rest are just meteorites again. Which gives me my eighth card because it's a hand and played. It does not count anything tucked, but I haven't tucked a single thing, which is maybe bad. And there we go. So all I got to do now is I could look for the 20, although I'd need more power to actually fight it. Um, or if I just want to rush the end game, I can do the upgrades of meld. That'll take four different gather turns, which is a little bit goofy, but hey, we can maybe do it. I've definitely got a path to ending the game. Oh, and they're trying to rush it too. Oh, they're both doing it. Uh, vanquishing one for each of them. Oh, but blue has none to vanquish, so they just go one, two, three. And as for black, they go to the first one available and get that guy. All right, well, clearly no question about this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to refresh. Yeah, a lot of cards, people. Let's start... Uh, Melding or questing or doing something with some of them. All right, and the Atoma is getting close to five stars. And Blue's going to try to vanquish again. They can't. I'm getting pretty lucky with uh, the flips here. Black's just moving. And now I'm glad I didn't explore more because I would have just given them more fodder to attack. Right, so coming to end game here. Move, gather, and play. Because hmm. the only place I can kill to also do a meld is over there. So I guess maybe I'll go like one, two, because I can't reach uh, that yet. So go here to uh, move, play, gather. So I'll move, I'll gather to meld. And one is definitely getting me a max attack. Actually, I guess a lot of them are. This one is gain one per meteorite you control, and I control four meteorites. So actually, this one is better if I do it early before I start losing other meteorites. So uh, melding, I just slide this underneath, and I immediately gain what it says. And then each time I meld again, I'm going to gain all of them again. So I'm getting three money which is a straight up victory point. So that's worth more than these two each uh, things here. So that was my move. That was my gather, my actual play. Um, I do have a quest I can complete. You know, let me do this. Um, I'm going to play my charter stone meteorite. I do have at least one melted uh, thing. So I get two more of that. Although <laughs> I definitely need more eyeballs or guiles and power. Okay, that's my play. And then, yeah, if I do a green. Oh, wait, I can't do a green because that's what I need to have Olga do the quest. So never mind that. Crud, yeah, I have way too many uh, <laughs> blue guys and not much else. Even though it's kind of a waste, I'm just going to get an extra guile because I need to fight a guile thing in a second. All right, yeah, whatever. All right, what's next? Okay, they got oop, their fifth star. But they can't kill the 20th because they haven't even found it yet, so we just can move three. And then black is going to sweep. And there is nothing to uncover. Ah, they're just going to go into the space I want to go to. A lot of sweeping. And yeah, that's literally where I want to be. I hope they don't get a corruption attack because I wanted to like kill that and do the action at the same time. It's fine though. <laughs> I got some other stuff I can do. So I'm actually, because I just want to try to win, I'm actually going to gather and move, not play. So gather lets me uh, meld another meteorite. And this one is the other one's going to get me max for a while. So this is one per orange corruption. And I have uh, max three. So I definitely have as many of those as I'm going to get. So that's three money. And then this one's giving me one for each meteorite control. 
which is now only one. Wait, I never had a fourth meteorite? <sighs> Are you serious? Oh, crud. I need to get another meteorite <laughs> for this whole plan. Oh, but by the way, I got three from the, or four from the combined. Crud, crud, crud. I was not paying attention. Okay, then I can move. Yeah, I want to move here to complete one of my quests. Although, yeah, I'm feeling worse. I mean, there's a meteorite there. Okay, there's, there's places I can go. It'll be okay. I got a little while before they do their sixth. Okay, cool. Um, four. Okay, so they are going to explore at the top and sweep. Sweep away a meteorite. There's still only one on the board now. Wow, they've been replaced a lot. Now there's still no items, though. And one, two. They can get to there. Stormy Sea. Okay, another place they can give you uh, stars. Three. Oh my gosh. And then a four. And then a three. Oh, it's actually a good place to get a lot of victory points if I get my guile up. Oh, no. Annoying. <laughs> they uh, do defeat the guy here. So I can't like do the combo of playing my tiger to kill that end meld at the same time. I will. Okay, now for this one, I'm going to move and play. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play Olga. That gets me now two guile and a power. Yeah. And I'm going to solve a quest. Uh, and I'm on space two, so I'm going to solve this one. So it's a little hard to see, but I got to pay a fist to gain a guile for this one. There we go. And then I tuck it and I gain the uh, thing for all my completed quests. So now my stars, three, hopefully soon to be four of them, are going to be worth uh, six each instead of five. Next one will be eight. Nice jump there. So I want to get to space 14 or space nine for that. All right, that was play. Now I can move. And right, I want to, let's see. So that's nine. Where's 14 for my other quest? Way up in the corner. I'm gonna get that last meteorite. So let's maybe like move here and the next turn I can like gather to get that card and then move over here to be able to tuck it on the following turn, I guess. Come on, hurry, hurry. I don't hurry, Never mind. Uh, <laughs> okay, they're exploring in the north and uh, yes, they can reach somebody to attack in the south. This, ah, there's the 20. So if they get the 20 or if, I decide to save up some more and try to get it. Uh, you can kill that. It's only worth two victory points on its own, but um, it is its own star category all to itself. Now for the AI, it's just a two victory point thing like everything else. So it's really not a big deal if they get it, unless I'm trying to get it instead. Okay, and then black, one, two, three. That is the almost last one down here. Okay, my turn is planned. I'm going to gather and move. Gather a bit of a waste, but I'm going to get the charter stone so that I have a fourth meteorite. Then I'll move over here so my next gather, I can activate that. See how it goes. It's going to be a lot of turns before I get this last star. I did not plan super well. Oh, crud. Yeah, they 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 kill the 20. Look at that. Um, and this guy's going to sweep and can't explore. So let's move three. The sweeping, I don't think I'm going to get any more cards, so I don't care too much about that. Boom. All right, for me, I'm definitely going to play and gather, right? I guess I'll play Changa um, so I can get an adjacent benefit. And I'm also getting, oh my gosh, I should be fighting more. What could the adjacent benefit be? Oh, that thing's still not dead. Uh, oh, wait, this doesn't matter at all. Maybe I'm not going to play Changa. I mean, nothing else really matters. I don't know, I'll get two brain then, whatever. All right, and I'm going to do the Charter Stone because I do have three active cards for my meld. So it'll give me three, six, and then I have one controlled meteorite, seven. All right, so two more turns. One to uh, meld my last meteorite, and then one to do the star, and I'm done. Although, I would love to do a, another quest, which would require recovering, uh, refreshing Olga. We'll see. Because I don't want to let them get too much more. All right, uh, they want to they want to conquer twice, but they can't, so that's good. They only move two, and this guy can't, so he'll just move two, because there's nothing left to flip. See, these guys are not within three spaces. They are behind him. All right. All right, see, I could this turn move and gather. I could meld my last card and then move to where the star is. The next turn I could play and gather, and I don't really have anything useful to play, but I could do it. Um, but if I refresh, I can get another quest. But that would take a whole extra turn to complete the quest. Oh, that's right, you get one final turn. Um, hmm. So yeah, I think I'm going to refresh. I don't know if this is the right call. <laughs> but yeah, I want to try to... To do more of these things all at once. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to be like some kind of game-breaking poor choice. I think I'm in a pretty solid spot, although we'll see how much they get. Okay. Oh, forgot to get two cards. Uh, they do get their sixth star. Uh-oh. But uh, I don't want them to get their seventh star. Uh, this guy can't reach anybody to attack again. That's great. And yeah, this guy can't explore again. That's great, too. All right, so the big thing is I need to be able to get to a star. Oh, there's one. Okay. Oh, I, I definitely have enough to kill that. Okay, so this should, uh, unless they mess me up. Okay, so I can move. Um, oh, do I want to move? Wait, I want to move to nine. I can gather to meld my last thing. Um, what? This one, Charterstone. So one per face of adjacent card. There's only two of those, so that's two. 
Uh, one per active card is zero. <laughs> well, I could uh, I could do the quest first. So let's say that I played Olga first. So hold on a second. We won't uh, gather yet. I'll play Olga to do the quest. That uh, cost me two fists. I get a free defeated corruption. That's nice. Just two victory points. Um, and then I tuck it. Gain one and one. Not that I needed them. Okay, and then I will gather to meld this. So I get two per two adjacent cards. One for an active card. That's three. Uh, max orange corruption. That's six. And one for meteorite control, which is now zero. Yeah, so definitely some diminishing returns there. But the next turn, please don't go here. I can go over there and kill like everybody and get the star. It'll be great. Unless they whammy me. Okay. And they're not at seven. Oh, that's right. I'm going to give them another turn. But this is great. This is great. I think this worked out just how I wanted to. Yeah, Blues is going to move too because they can't explore. That means they're not on the space I wanted to go to. And oh, uh, yes. Black can get the last corruption right here for them. But I don't care because what do I want to do? Move and play. That's what I want to do. Move and play. So I'm going to move here and play Changa. Which gets me like basically to almost max of everything. Uh, and then I'll put a blue on him. Which will certainly, yeah, I mean, I need what? Uh, two orange and six guile. Two, so two and six. And then because I uncovered the star, I can activate it with Chang's ability. Which is going to get me my last star for four melds. Which means we both get one more turn. Let's see if the will tell me I get that last star. Ah, you butts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nothing else they do matters. They can't uh, fight anybody. All right, whatever. Okay, and then what can I do? I have no ability. I mean, the only card I can play is a quest. Should just get me Guile. Can't refresh, get my attacks back. I can move and play or move and gather. Is there anything I could gather that would get me anything? I don't think so. Yeah, it's okay. So we're just going to call it and not take my last action. That's fine. All right, so final scoring. Let's uh, do the Atoma first. All right, so final scoring. Let's do the Atoma first. Getting one per map, two per corruption, five for star. So that's 35 to start. Uh, let's see. Eight maps, so 43. The nine corruption, 18 points, 43, 53, 61, I want to say. Okay, and then for me, we just start with our money from all our meldings. So that's 10, 16, oh, 20 even, nice. Okay, then stars, and I had two quests, which is worth eight. Uh, so four times eight, 32, plus 20, 52. Okay, and then upgraded items, zero. And finally, two for each of these. I think I got to be totally fine. So 52... 62. There he beats them, right? <laughs> 72, 76. All right. I guess I should have gone up to uh, <laughs> level four difficulty, maybe. Although I did get some nice synergies early with like my mech's power and uh, that one, uh, whatever it was, meteorite or quest. Yeah, quest to let me uh, fight things and such. But there you go. That was Expeditions in Action, the solo play. Like I said, I'm under review embargo until like I think it's June 12th or something. But I've already played this competitive and solo, and I will uh, tell you all my thoughts when I'm allowed to. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.